Good morning. Two verses this morning that seem maybe a little bit to contradict one another. Let's look at them. Jude chapter 1 verse 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Earnestly contend. What is a contender? A contender is a competitor. Somebody who is going to vigorously work to try to achieve a victory in a situation. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24, And the servant of the Lord must not strive. So how can you be a contender who's earnestly contending and not strive? Well, there's a big difference, in, and I think for us as followers of Jesus, we really need to learn that difference. If people are offended by the gospel, so be it. But if people are offended by us, well, now we, we, have, we have stepped across the line. How do we earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints? In other words, how do we share the word of God both within the church and to the lost world, both with uh, dealing with people who are teaching false things uh, and, and you know the savage wolves that try to come into the church? How do we deal with that? Uh, and yet not be a person who strives, like Paul tells Timothy. And I think the way that we do this, the way that we understand this, is to understand uh, there are some, some rules. Paul said that he buffeted his body and he kept under itself that he might not be disqualified. And that's what happens. When you, when you are in a, a competition that you're contending for the, the mastery of and the victory in, there's rules involved in that. There's... Uh, boundary lines, uh, there's rules as far as certain holds and certain punches that could be thrown, uh, there's rules as far as time limits are concerned, all of these kinds of things, and and it goes the same way for the way that we deal with people. So let's think about some of those. How can we contend without being a person who's striving? Well, in First Peter chapter 3 and verse 15 it says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear. We're to be meek, we're to be humble, and we are to be respectful. That, that fear is a godly reverence and respect that we are to have as we deal with people. In the book of Colossians, chapter 4, uh, <clears throat> and verse 6, it says, Let your speech be always with grace. We need to speak with grace as we talk to people. Seasoned with salt. <clears throat> <clears throat> that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Hey, you can disagree with somebody and you can point out the differences in the truth of the Word of God and what they believe without being mean and nasty about it. Second Timothy chapter 2, again, verse 23, he says, But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender stripes. Don't even argue. When, when somebody has foolish and ignorant things that they are talking about, don't even go off into those things because it won't do you any good. He says, the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men. So we're to have a gentle, a meek, uh, let our speech be seasoned with grace. He says, uh, apt to teach. That means to have an aptitude to teach people what the Bible actually says. Now think about it. When somebody uh, forcefully yells at you, screams at you, demands things of you, do you uh, respond well to that? No. But think about some of the teachers that you've had in your life who were gentle, who were meek, who knew their stuff, who, who could help you to understand something. That's what we're supposed to be like. We're supposed to be patient with people. He says, be patient in meekness. There it is again. Instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. That's a maybe. We don't know whether they're going to come to repentance or not. But we certainly don't want for us to be the reason that they don't listen to the Word of God because of our manner. Because we come across as striving and fighting and combative and mean and nasty. Instead, we're to be meek. We're to be humble. We are to be apt to teach. We are to be gentle as we deal with people. We're to let our speech be seasoned with grace. Be careful about the way that we talk to people. And he says, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. We've got to realize the lost world can't see Jesus.
because their eyes are blind. And as we deal with them, we've got to deal with them with grace. Aren't you glad that people have dealt with you with grace? Let's pass that grace on today. God bless. Have a great day.